What's going on? Welcome back to another exciting episode of Tech Productions. Tag Bankrupt joins again by Chase, and today we have so, the Goku Corn deck profile. There's buttons. Check them out. Let's get into it. All right. So here is our leader. Uh, incredible art on the leader. Uh, he has two very simple effects: top five search on activate main, and then he can awaken if you have a skillless and your life is a six or less. It has to be both. Make sure you read the card right. Uh, his backside is uh, the pinnacle of the deck. Uh, it lets you cast your Dragon Balls for free. It lets you combo with Skillless and Rest Mode, uh, and it also allows you to negate a card when a Skillless enters the board, which you can do at Activate Battle Speed, which, of course, is just insane. Uh, and to help facilitate that, we are running six of the Dragon Balls. I don't know how you want this to be shown, but here we are. Um, there's um, room to to play one more or you can cut these and sort of play like the other skillless dragon ball package like the black one if you want to um this card's just really really good but you can sometimes brick on it because they are once per turn um but i think six perfectly fine this is what the whole deck centered around uh it's got two main effects um you can tap one during your turn or if you're awakened you get it for free um you can uh play a skillless equal to your energy uh and then uh, that will cause your leader's effects to go off and uh, all sorts of fun stuff like that. And even if you do sort of brick on it, uh, you can just discard your skillesses. And speaking of the skillesses, uh, you've got your one drop, two drop, and your three drop. I'm a little light on these, I think, like sort of in hindsight, but I, I like this ratio quite a bit. Um, you just like to have them out. You don't really want to swarm with them as much as you might think. So, uh, just, you know, you never want to cast these, and having non-castables in your hand isn't super great. Um, sometimes you have to. That's why you play the Upa to have a skillless, because your deck can just go offline if this gets, like, removed in some way and you're not prepared. So, uh, that's our skillless line up. And to sort of help us get there... Uh, a card that I wasn't a fan of when I first read it, but now I'm kind of like a, a fan. Uh, this card is like the best turn one play that we have uh, in the deck, just to facilitate it. Uh, if your opponent swings um, at you at all, it sort of guarantees your awaken um, because you will have a two drop skillless by the time that your turn starts. Can't they can't really uh, interact with it because it sends the Boro to your warp, then plays as soon as your turn starts. So it's a good way to protect things. Um, some other stuff from the archetype itself. Uh, I'm running two of the Mercenary Tau uh, and three of this guy. Uh, I kind of want to bump this guy up. Uh, he is very, very good. Um, these both have sort of the same type of effects. Uh, if you have a skill, so you can play them for one. Add a Dragon Ball to your hand. This guy um, also lets you uh, self-awaken. And this guy can KO a skillless. So those are just good toolboxes that your deck already facilitates. Um, sort of uh, some payoffs for having skillesses are this card. Uh, thank you, Bancroft of the channel, letting me borrow this you one. Want, I came from my other ones. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we run two of this. Um, I really like this card. This card interacts very well with your skillesses. Um, you can play your Bora, make sure you have it out. It gains attack. This guy's double striker. Um, it facilitates your leader and you draw one, uh, if that's your first skillless of the turn. This card is, I think, a must-include tech for right now. And we have sort of the other big payoff of the deck. This guy gets gigantic very, very quickly. It's a shiny card. Holy He's so shiny. <laughs> he, um, dual attack, uh, tap to, uh, and negate their skills, ignoring barrier. So that lets you start popping them. Let you get rid of uh, barriers. Uh, it it just does everything that you might want, uh, and then it also adds a dragon ball, so you can facilitate your plays next turn as well. A card that I have not resolved once since putting in here uh, is the SR Grandpa Gohan. Uh, he reads well. I don't think he plays super well. Uh, you have to have this guy out in order for him to really be playable at all. Uh, he locks you out of other counterattacks when you uh, use him. But um, other than that, I mean, if you get him off, he is um, a free negate that's a blocker. Uh, 
Uh, I think that sort of a pipe dream, maybe if the five drop uh, had some sort of protection, it might be a little better. But um, that's sort of it for the battle cards in the main that uh, act as battle cards. Um, so we've got our token blockers, um, Corn, sort of in the same vein, uh, tap one, play him out. Uh, he's a Sensu Bean um, and a blocker. Uh, didn't really play this guy too much. I think he can come out for something a little more powerful. Um, but uh, he's a fun little archetype card. Um, beaning can just edge your opponent out of the game. And speaking of edge your opponent out of the game, all of our fun yellow cards. Running four robot, three Vegito. Uh, I'm guessing you all know what this card does, and this card by extension. Uh, they just give you an extra turn 99 times out of 100, and if not, they just put the game into your favor. Uh, for other fun uh, yellow cards that are just sort of generic, running Power of Super Saiyan and uh, two Tyrannical Blow. Uh, just good staple cards at this point. We have our Super Combo Package, we're running one Zamas and three Krillin. Uh, I like this as a tech. Uh, it really helps when they're under a robot lock as well, just to make sure that that turn ends. Uh, and it's pretty. Uh, so that's a good <laughs> indicator of why I want to play it. And we have one last card, uh, Secret Rare of Choice. I ran this today. Uh, it's what's on hand. I like it as a, uh, an extra T-blow. Um, it's sort of a jump scare. Um, I think maybe Gohan Piccolo might be stronger in some situations. I think your number one can also be a lot stronger in certain situations. But it's hard to uh, see this resolve against like a uh, defending friends and not want to hop all over it. And so we've got our Z. Um, I'm just playing the archetype in the Z. Um, you can play it however you want. Uh, two of this card is insane. Has three incredible effects. Uh, if you don't know what it does, um, you can um, make all of your Gokus on the board currently gain plus five. You can KO uh, Skillless or you can sack it to... Uh, give your Goku that's attacking critical and plus 10 so just all around everything you could ever want and we have Tao I think this guy is sort of what you want to do turn two if at all possible um, if you have your Bora which makes the Upa so good because you can have it on uh, turn two this guy goes down in cost and Z cost you can sack your Bora and gain three Dragon Balls from your deck or drop to hand at the cost of the two cards in your hand. So this guy makes sure that you have those Dragon Balls because as soon as you run out, you are losing the game until you find more. That's one thing we have learned over the last couple of uh, playthroughs of this deck. We're running two Corm. Uh, we're at six right now in the Z. You can play uh, a third of whatever or you can run a generic uh, sort of a flex spot. But this guy's really good because it helps you actually play your five drop and not have to worry about making sure you have the skillless and also he gives your goku and this card uh plus 10 while you have that skillless so he's a 20 and then he makes your big five drop a 35 dual attack so the deck really wants to edge out your opponent and that giant swing really helps out awesome appreciate it, chase once again guys buttons bye